Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about air filters or air boxes for motorcycles, more specifically for the Yamaha and Max. So it's important that you understand that this is not an installation video. We're not going to be showing you how to install or modify anything. This is just a discussion video where we're going to be talking about aspects of air boxes, what they do, what you can do to modify them, or what some people do to modify them, what kind of characteristics it will have after you modify it, covering the topic of air filters and air boxes in a general way so that people that don't understand them or uh, don't have too much knowledge about air filters and what they do on motorcycles, scooters, or in this case, the Yamaha NMAX, you get a better understanding. We are gonna treat this as uh, a video for beginners as well. So if you know absolutely nothing about air filters or air boxes, that's great. This video is probably for you. If you already know everything and you're kind of uh, in, trying to find out a lot more um, deeper aspects, there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that's not relevant to you because you already know this. But uh, bear with us, here we go. What is an air filter? What is an air box? An air box is basically the, the box that you use to suck in air, okay, for the engine. Every engine needs fresh air, clean, fresh air. If you don't understand how an engine works, go and learn the fundamentals of an engine, but engines need fresh air, a constant flow of fresh air. How that works is it sucks in air through an air tube, which is usually fed into an air box. So this is the air box. On the air box, there should be an air filter element, which is uh, in this case, the silver portion, the grate you can see inside there, which filters out elements, okay? So the box is designed to keep moisture dirt and any foreign foreign elements outside so it filters that out and then it sucks in after the filter element you get fresh air which is fed um, it's kind of dark sorry uh, there's an air tube there that feeds uh, straight to the engine okay and that's what the air box does now we're gonna have a look at the design of the air box okay how does it do that you know, surely if it rains there's stuff's gonna get in there and if it's sucking in air Surely there's dust, dirt, and things like dead leaves and debris everywhere in the atmosphere. And if you're traveling on the road where every vehicle in front of you is kicking up dirt, surely it's going to suck in the dust and stuff, right? So we're going to have a look how it stops that. How is it designed on this scooter to counteract that? Let's have a look at where the air actually sucks in from this uh, air filter, okay? This entire section is an air box. It is very, very large. This is just the front cover of the air box, okay? So anything on this side is unfiltered. Now, this is where it sucks in air, okay? Not from any of this section here, but it actually, it actually uh, sucks in air from the bottom here, as you can see along there. This is actually, there's a very narrow gap, as you can see, just there, and a bit of a bigger gap here and a bigger gap here. Now what this section is here is this is a CVT cover, okay? The CVT is there and it sucks air in from the top of this CVT. Now the reason Yamaha have designed it this way is because uh, if, if they put it anywhere else, it would have sucked in air from, shall we say, a more vulnerable position. For instance, if rain is coming down here, you're traveling in this direction, rain's gonna be hitting it this way, okay? So all the rain's gonna be hitting here, hitting here, hitting here, and the main plate, and it coming down here and dripping, hopefully dripping off before it gets to this section here, or this is probably gonna be wet, and it's gonna be sucking air from uh, here, okay? So as it does that, a little bit of moisture is going to be going up, but it's not directly impacting the rain. The CVT box is hot, okay, which is why there's a cover there. Now, if you don't know about air, fresh air and engines, the, the cooler the air, the better, okay? So, because colder air is denser, uh, therefore it can, it adds to power, basically. You can, you can have a slightly better engine. This is only a scooter, uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about this, so that's probably why this is designed this way. If was, this was something like a performance bike, like a race track bike, the, the cooler the air you can get, the better, which is why on most sports bikes, uh, air filter elements are usually up front further, okay? But on the scooter, it's kind of like a point that you don't have to care about, okay? <laughs> the, um, uh, just because it's sucking in warmer air, it doesn't mean your scooter's gonna be super slow. It is the difference between nothing. You're not gonna feel it on the scooter. The air intake is literally just above the CVT cover here. There's this small section here and small section here. That helps keep out all the dust. So any dust and debris you've got coming from this side, it's not gonna be ramming into it. Okay, the bike isn't is gonna be going that way, 
but nothing that it hits is going to be sucking in here. It's literally sucking in from what I would call a dead point because this is all going to be stable and not moving in correlation to that. So it's sucking in uh, what I would call a slightly more a safer position of air. So it's sucking in from here. Obviously, if it's raining, there is, this part is going to be wet containing some moisture, some rain there. So when it sucks in, it is going to suck in some moisture from here. Now, if that happens, there is a countermeasure which this box is designed to use. Uh, I've removed it on this one, but I'm going to show you on the original box how that is. So as you can see, this is the air box cover, the same one, the see-through one that you just saw, but this is the original one, so it's not see-through. And I'll show you the design of how uh, they design this. It's really quite clever, but it is kind of... Um, common on most scooters. What I mean is a lot of manufacturers of scooters have adopted this kind of design. I don't think Yamaha came up with it. I don't think it's like a Yamaha specific design. It is just, I guess, the most logical solution to try and keep out dirt and moisture. Okay, so as we, as I just said, it sucks in air from the bottom. That's this section here, okay, on the cover just now, as you've seen. This one has been removed. I'm just going to turn it over so you can see the inside of the design there. Now, as it sucks in air from the bottom here, here, it goes up through here and comes into this little section there. I'm sorry if it's too dark, but uh, this is the best lighting I've got. Okay, so uh, this is a and the air tube or the snorkel that is inside here. And snorkels are usually um, incorporated into designs of air boxes or air filters or air filter units um, to try and keep out or direct moisture okay and and the dirt so this is inside here it's usually usually installed there there's a little nipple there which is um to make sure you have the correct orientation of the snorkel which is here just like that okay there's a specific orientation to it because there is a cutout on one section there and i'll tell you why that's designed that way okay normally it's like this so as you can see it is sucking in air through here uh, if moisture and dirt comes up uh, through here it'll be sucked through here obviously this is a choked section or a bottleneck section which means air might be flowing in a certain uh, speed from here but once it gets to here and it's choked it's going to be a lot faster coming through here because the same volume of air needs to get through this part in the same uh, in a shorter amount of time because the uh, obviously the area is smaller that's going to create this to make the air much quicker Okay, it, it in a sense speeds up. I know it doesn't speed up, but the, the speed of the air coming through here is gonna be a lot faster. And what that does is if there's moisture, okay, water or dirt, which has been sucked in, it's gonna come through here and because of the accelerated speed, it's gonna fire out, okay? And the reason for that is, there's a cutout here on here, it's gonna fire out because it needs to not just come in and drop it needs to be fired out to this section here at great speed. And um, they've put a cutout here so it just doesn't fire out here. It also fires out that way, okay? That way, into this part here, uh, this empty smooth part. And this part's sloped here to allow the moisture and the dirt that it's picked up to hit there, hit there, and then dribble down, okay? And this part is specifically designed with a dip, in a sense, like a cup to try and hold the moisture or dirt in that section there or debris, okay? And if you look very closely, right in the bottom there is a hole and on the hole there on the other side is this section here, this little part here. And normally there's a plastic nipple that is connected to there and any moisture that you have, you can squeeze the nipple and it will come out, okay? And I'll show you where that nipple is on the, uh, on the actual air box now. And this is the nipple here, as you can see. So if, if you've got moisture that's been collected up on here, you can, what you do is you just squeeze this nipple and it creates an open opening there and all the moisture comes out, okay? And that's the design of the air box. It's pretty uh, ingenious. Now, on mine, you can see that I have removed the snorkel. And if you look very closely, you can also almost see that I've enlarged the inlet hole there, okay? And I'll tell you why I've done that. So let's talk about all the problems of this kind of design. What's the problem with this kind of design? Why does everyone, uh, almost everyone, uh, go to modify their air filter or the air filter element or um, the air box? They actually um, completely remove this and, and uh, replace it with a, a racing air filter or a filter pod. Why do people do that? So let's discuss that. Um, first of all, 
The countermeasures, as you've seen, the countermeasures in this design to try and keep out the dirt, the moisture, foreign bodies, anything out, and keep your bike in tip-top condition, is it is very constrictive, okay? It is very constrictive. With all this uh, redirecting of the air and making the air travel a certain path and then hitting, rebounding, and then hitting jagged edges, the airflow is not gonna be very smooth. If the airflow isn't very smooth, it's gonna be not as efficient, okay? So what that means is, let's say it can suck in normally without all of this. It can suck in this volume of air. Uh, once you incorporate all of this um, restrictive uh, countermeasures, it's probably gonna only suck in half that, okay? So that means the engine is having trouble breathing. The explosion, okay, or let's say the combustion of the engine, everything should be calculated perfectly. So let's say if you've got, say, this amount of fuel, you need this amount of air, which will create this amount of power, okay? If you take out the air, it's not gonna require, if you take out, if you halve the air that it can get, it's gonna not require that much fuel. It's probably gonna require a lot less fuel um, to match the air, so the, the explosion is gonna be smaller, or the combustion, okay, I, I shouldn't see, keep saying explosion. That's making p less power, okay? So the same engine, because the air has been restricted, it is making less power. If you don't do that, if you don't control the fuel um, to, the, um, to the air, then you have air fuel ratio uh, problems. It's either gonna to be too rich or too lean, the mixture. You need to get that kind of spot on. So as I said, with the problem with this is, uh, a lot of people think, okay, so this is making constricting it, making it incredibly uh, difficult to breathe. All I do is make this easier breathing, remove all the restrictions, and then it'll get a lot more air, and then the bike will be breathe more freely, and then you get more power, right? Well, that's kind of uh, not how it works. Because the manufacturers have matched the air to the fueling, if you play with the uh, the airing, okay, the amount of air it intakes, you then also have to play with the fueling, how much fuel it injects. So in basic terms, if you play with the air intake, you may have to play with your fueling, which is uh, depending on what bike you got, usually uh, let's say it's fuel injected and controlled by an ECU, you probably have to um, play with the ECU or play with the fueling in some kind of way, uh, which is what I've done on mine. But uh, let's talk more about this. So how, in what ways can you um, change this? Uh, back in the days when I was a kid and I was playing around with uh, little motorbikes or uh, very small CC bikes just for fun, a lot of the guys that I knew that couldn't afford many mods and literally scrounged up as much and saved up as many pennies as they could to buy a bike. They didn't have any money to modify their bike. So uh, a cheap mod that they would do would be to Swiss cheese the airbox or drill loads of air holes in the airbox in the attempt that it would, uh, not on the NMAX of course, on, on a very, very old bike from like the 80s and stuff, um, in the Swiss cheese the airbox making loads of in, inlet holes in the attempt that it was sucking more air. Believe it or not, on certain bikes, that did work. It did happen, you know. They, um, because the inlet hole was so much bigger, it could suck in so much more air. That's kind of changing the uh, the amount of volume of air it can get in. But they didn't play with the fueling, I don't think. They didn't rejet or anything, so it, it really didn't make a difference. It made a different sound, which was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I don't mind a better sounding bike, you know. But you've got to match these things, okay? You can't change the aspects of one area and not change the other. So if you play with the, the, the airbox, try and uh, adjust your fueling to match, okay? So uh, one of the ways is to adjust how much air it can get, that is changing uh, the inlet hole. In this case, you could take this cover off and completely expo expose the, uh, the air hole. That will make it slightly better. But then again, the more you change how much air can get in, the more you risk more debris and uh, more moisture getting in. One of the things that people do is changing the, the filter element. Most standard manufacturer elements you get are paper ones, sometimes sprayed with some filter oil just so that it can catch more stuff. Those are, are pretty cheap. It's almost a, a cloth-like material. It's not just paper, it is almost cloth-like. Those are very good at keeping out contaminants, very good at catching moisture if ever any moisture gets in and pretty easy to replace. You just go back to the manufacturer and say, I need a new air filter element for my bike. If you change that, you can change that to an aftermarket one, okay? Like um, the one I've got on my NMAX is made of steel and it is 
very free flowing compared to the original paper one. Again, if any very fine debris got in there, like dirt, incredibly soft and fine dirt got in there, it would have a hard time filtering it all out. All out. So I have sacrificed the efficiency of the filter element for performance. It's sucking in more air, breathing much more easier. I've removed the snorkel, but I do risk, you know, getting more moisture and dirt in there, okay? That's one of the things you need to think about. If you go further than that, take it one step further, you can actually replace the whole air box with an air filter cone. It kind of looks like a cup, and all of the sides are made from a filter element. That doesn't have a box. It literally just, you remove the whole air filter box, this whole box here, and then you literally screw on the new air filter, you know, the cone filter. Now, people say, well, racing bikes have uh, filters like that and they're fine. The one thing you need to understand is a racing bike is designed to have, uh, this is a scooter, so I don't even know what I'm talking about that, but I'll throw this in there anyway, for those of you that are curious. A racing bike is not designed to commute to work in the rain. Race tracks are normally pretty clean, free from dirt. If it rains, it is for that one day only. If you run your bike with one of those, like a, like a cone filter uh, only, in the rain, in the dirt, every day, you will eventually get a lot of moist and a lot of debris in there. It's just the way it is, depending on the placement of the cone, obviously, but normally they're quite exposed to try and maximize airflow. They have one purpose, and that is to suck in as much air as possible to make sure you are getting the maximum horsepower at all times. At the same time, trying its best to keep constant airflow while removing debris, debris and, and moisture and what have you. So hopefully that's uh, cleared up a few things. And as you can see on my bike, my uh, NMAX scooter, I have replaced the airbox cover with a clear one. I've done a video on that, you've probably seen it. Uh, if not, go check it out. Because I've changed the air filter element on the inside of mine from the paper version to this steel version, which is more free flowing and removed the snorkel on the inside and uh, bored out the, uh, the inlet hole to a larger diameter, there is more risk of sucking in more debris or moisture um, going in there now that it's not going to be firing from the snorkel all of the moisture to this section it is going to be sucking it in and it's going to be going in there so uh, I will be more careful in the rain but it's been good so far uh, I haven't ridden this in torrential rain but I have in light rain so and it's been fine so far I've got this box so that I the the see-through cover so that I can see any debris that gets in there or any moisture that gets um, brought in here or over there okay so I can keep a close eye on that and board up the hole there just so that it can suck in more air okay again with the uh, filter element the free-flowing filter element there without completely removing the box which I think it would be probably not very beneficial to the uh, to the running of the scooter now I have bought this up to 180 cc's that's coming up from uh, well I went from a 125 to a 155 and then bought it up again to a 180 um, including the air filter and the element and the way it's set up now it did need a fuel controller which I have installed here as you can see there it's got my um, fuel controller the it was running very very horrible okay the the NMAX was running very very horrible with the standard stuff installed okay it was uh just oh, horrible I'll, I'll probably do a video later i, I uh, can actually this fuel controller has an on off switch believe it or not which i can i can turn off and it labors really badly it kind of when you start it up it's like chugging away and doesn't feel like um it's it's running at it's most efficient you can actually hear it running sluggish and as soon as i turn the engine off uh, flip the fuel controller back on you can actually hear it running so much smoother okay so um, if you do play with your airbox you might get away with it depending on the bike especially if it's a small cc bike but it's best to play with the fueling if you mess around with the air intake the airbox and how much volume it can take in now hopefully this has um, clarified a few things to people out there I mean I started off not knowing anything about bikes. Um, I just played around with bikes all my life, but just because I was playing around with it doesn't mean I knew a lot. There were many questions for many years and a lot of kids that these days that get into scooters or mopeds or whatever, or motorbikes, they think, oh, you know what? The first thing I'm gonna do when I get my little uh, motorbike is I'm gonna change the air intake because that's where it's gonna suck in more air, give me more horsepower. 
uh, but they do not understand the the other aspect of it is you can't just change the air filter and stuff and make it more free flowing. I know like the manufacturers of um, like racing air filters and stuff, they say all you do is change this over, no fueling required, gives you more power, more efficiency, more miles per gallon. That is probably true, but it's the engine could do with a bit of tweaking, okay? The fueling could do with a bit of tweaking just to run optimally. If you truly want the benefits of sucking in more air, play with the fueling. Uh, just to get it running running correct, okay? The worst thing you can do is make it suck in so much air that it runs lean. If it runs lean, your engine, if you don't know, you know this, but if you don't know, I'll just throw this in there. If you run lean and you don't know you're running lean, your engine could get incredibly hot and it may do some damage in, in the long run. That's it, basically. Uh, hopefully this video helps someone out there. I just thought I'd put it out there because this question comes up quite a lot. It's quite a beginner's point, but still, it catches some people out. So, hope you enjoyed the video. It was just a bit of my time. I don't really mind. <laughs> Actually, enjoy um, sharing information whenever I can. Uh, but thank you very much, guys, for checking out the video. And this is Astro, signing off.